This section is over exponential functions and what the graph of exponential functions looks like. So we've been talking a lot about graphing things lately, but we've been talking about graphing polynomials lately. And so now this section switches into what's the difference between an exponential function and a polynomial function, and how does the graph of that change? So let me just get right into the definition. The definition of an exponential function is where you have a base to an exponent, so b to the x. Now, there is a couple of stipulations that go with this here. Your base has to be a number larger than 0, and your base cannot equal 1. So let me talk about my restrictions first, and then we'll talk about more um, exponential functions in a second. So the second restriction here is hopefully easy to see. If our base equals 1, then our function would be 1 to the exponent. Well, it wouldn't matter what our exponent's going to be because that would always be 1. So this is no longer an exponential equation because I no longer have x in the power. It's now just a constant because my number will always come out to be 1. So that's why b cannot equal 1. Let's talk about why b must be greater than 0. Okay, so if I had a function where my base was a negative number, like negative 4 to an exponent. Okay, let's just say, well, we can plug in values here. If x is equal to 1, sure, no big deal. f of 1 is equal to negative 4. But let's kind of play devil's advocate here. What numbers can I not plug into this? So what happens if x is equal to 1 half? Then I would have negative 4 to the 1 half, or if I rewrote that, we know that 1 half is equivalent to the square root, square root of negative 4, and I know that I cannot take the square root of negative 4 because that is an imaginary number. So this function will be defined if x is a whole number, that's no big deal, but if the x is any sort of decimal or fraction in between every single one of those whole numbers, it will come out to be undefined because it is going to be a root of the negative number, and the root of a negative number doesn't make sense. So that's why b must be greater than 0. Okay, when you first look at this, you might just think, oh, I have something to a power. So it looks like the same thing as a polynomial. But we must distinguish the difference between an exponential function and a polynomial function. So polynomial functions, which we just got done talking about, look like this. Notice where your x is. Your x itself is in the base. And we might have a constant as a power. Now, when I'm talking about exponential functions, which I see here, my x is in the exponent. So when your x is in the exponent or your x is in the power, that's when you have an exponential function. When your x is in the base, that's when you have a polynomial function. Okay, so now we know how they're defined. Let's talk a little bit more about them. And I'm just going to do that by looking at an actual example. I have the function of f of x is equal to 2 to the x. We're going to graph this, and then after we graph this, we're going to talk about our important parts, the domain, the range, the horizontal asymptote, and the y-intercept. So you might be wondering, well, why am I not going to be talking about vertical asymptotes, and why am I not going to be talking about x-intercepts? And we'll see that here after I get done graphing this function. So since I don't know anything about this function at this time, the only thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in numbers. So... Let's pick generic x values, and let's see what our function or our y value is going to come out to be. So let's just start with whole numbers, like x is equal to 0. If I plug in 0 to my function, like f of 0, that gives me 2 to the 0 exponent. Hopefully remember, anything that has 0 in the exponent is equivalent to 1. And so therefore, my ordered pair here is going to be 0, 1. Okay. If I pick 1, that gives me 2 to the first power, which is equivalent to 2. So that gives me that ordered pair. If I pick 2, I get f of 2 is equal to 2 squared, or I get 2, 4. How about if I pick 5? 
f of 5 is equal to 2 to the fifth power, or we see that that is 32. So we see that in the exponential functions, my y values, when we compare this, we might think that our y values initially only get slightly larger and larger, but then when we move on, we see that they can get really large really fast. Okay, what if I picked negative values, like negative 1? So that gives me f of negative 1 is 2 to the negative first power. Hopefully you remember, if you have negative in the exponents, that means you flip your fraction because you have a bad attitude. So that's going to be 1 half. So negative 1 gives me 1 half. Negative 2. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, or that gives me 1 fourth. Let's plot these points and let's see if we can kind of get a general, general image of this graph. So I have my y-intercept at 0, 1. I have 1, 2. I have 2, 4. I have 5. 32. So that's off the charts here, so I can't even do that. So I might need to come up with some more x values in the positive direction. In the negative direction, I have negative 1, 1 half, negative 2, 1 fourth, so on and so forth. So if I drew a rough sketch of this graph, it would look something like this here. We see it gets smaller and smaller and smaller on the left but it never touches zero and it never goes below zero. On the right, it gets larger and larger and larger super fast. And so we say that it gets larger exponentially. It grows exponentially. All right, so we have an image of this graph. We wanna talk about domain, which is possible x values. Now, I could not determine an x value that cannot be plugged into my function. I didn't pick any decimals or fractions, but I could plug them in there the exact same way. And so my domain is negative infinity to infinity. My range is my y value. Notice that my y value goes forever up to the top, so that's my largest y value. But notice my y values do not go below zero. And notice my y values will actually never equal zero. So it will be zero and above, but never equaling zero. Now, why did I pick horizontal asymptote and not vertical asymptote? Purely for the reason that exponential graphs will always have a horizontal asymptote, and they will never have a vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote we see is right here. Just like I said on the left, your graph gets closer and closer to zero but never touches it. That defines what an asymptote is. So we have a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis where y equals zero. My y-intercept, we actually found that with our first point here where it intercepts the y-axis, and so that is zero, one. Why didn't I pick an x-intercept? Because I have a horizontal asymptote at my x-axis, therefore it should never intercept my x-axis, therefore I don't have an x-intercept. And so now we see a general shape of an exponential function. On the left, it gets closer and closer to zero. On the right, it grows super fast, meaning it grows exponentially. Okay, let me tweak my function a little bit, and we're going to see how that tweaks what I've just described in this exponential function. So now I have, instead of 2 to the x, I have 1 half to the x power. So I suggest that you pause this video and you plug your own values into this, see what your graph looks like, and then see if you can define these four things over here on the right. Okay, so I'm just going to pick, again, generic x values. I like to start with zero because zero is easy to work with. So if I have one half to the zero, that gives me one, so my ordered pair is 0, 1. If I plug in 1 in here, 1 half to the first power gives me 1 half. If I plug 2 in here, I get 1 half squared. So I square both the numerator and the denominator. So 
So in the numerator, 1 squared gives me 1. In the denominator, 2 squared gives me 4. If I pick something slightly larger in there, like 5, 1 half to the fifth power gives me 1 to the fifth, or 1, 2 to the fifth, or 32. Let me pick some negative values. If I pick negative 1, I get 1 half to the negative 1. And again, negative exponents means you flip your fraction. So that's the same thing as 2 over 1 to the positive first power. So that's the same thing as 2. So my ordered pair is negative 1, 2. If I plug negative 2 in there, I get 1 half to the negative 2 or 2 over 1 to the positive 2 or 4. So it gives me negative 2, 4. If I plug negative 3 in there, same philosophy, gives me 2 over 1 to the positive third or 8 or negative 3, 8. Okay, plotting these ordered pairs, I have 0, 1, 1, 1 half, 1, 1 fourth, 5, and then 1 over 32. On the left, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 3, 8. And so we can see that here, is this exponential function. So it mimics the same graph that we had before, except for it is basically flipped horizontally. So it's flipped like this. And we'll explain why here in the next video. But right now, let's continue on with these characteristics. My domain, I can still plug in every single x value. My range is still the same. It starts at 0, but doesn't include it all the way up to infinity. My horizontal asymptote is still at my x-axis. And my y-intercept was the same place, 0, 1. And so we have done some basic graphs of exponential functions. In the next video, I'm going to define all the characteristics of exponential functions and how we can adjust them using the transformations that we've previously learned.